for uh, some laps that have already happened. And uh, it was supposed to be face-to-face uh, -face in Palermo in a completely different scenario. But <laughs> anyway, we've made the most uh, to, to, well, to try to, to achieve the, the, the most from this training, although it's quite different to make it um, this way that uh, a four or five day training program. So yeah, I would like to give you my my happy welcome, and um, uh, I would like, if it's possible, then very short uh, for the ones that are not partners to present yourself and say just name. Although we have it, the name, which partner you come from, and if you have or you do not have. Uh, previous uh, knowledge about this kind of things so we can have more or less an idea of uh, what's the composition of the group and uh, after the words I will be sharing the screen uh, hello Elena <laughs> uh, afterwards I will be sharing the screen and we'll have a, a, a brief presentation of the first module uh, just I will go through this uh, during the presentation, but remember these sessions are complementary uh, um, of what we have online, the material we have online on the website. So, um, yeah, we should try to go through both things, you know, have read the, the more theoretical part and then use this space more to discuss or to share experiences or to share doubts, maybe. Um, more than go again and again over the same over the same contents. Um, so uh, are we? Do, 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 just a minute. Let me see if we can make the. Oscar, can we make the screenshot? Should I disconnect? Okay. Good. So, um, yeah, I will share my screen and uh, share a, a, a short PowerPoint just to guide the session. The idea, of course, is to uh, to share and, and to discuss more than to listen. So please interrupt, ask, suggest, or whatever you find it's, it's necessary. Um, just a minute, I'll share my screen right now. Okay, do you see? I'm not, I'm not seeing you anymore, so <laughs> if you want to tell me something, you have to use the mic. Um, okay, so First thing, uh, a brief introduction on why open CCCP, uh, besides the obvious joke about the Soviet Union, um, we, we would like to uh, remark the, 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 the words that, co that compose the title. Uh, this is mainly and has a very important part of uh, this open thing, this open educational rec uh, resource, this open practice, this open knowledge, this no, you have. We we want to really make emphasis on this uh, on this word open, and then we're working. Mo most of us are working in a more or less cultural um, field. More or less, yeah. Uh, we work with communities. We, uh, we have uh, a specific interest in, in, in keep on working with communities and inspire others to work with and to raise the knowledge the communities already have. And we're also working with, uh, with the commons. So that's this, the basis of this uh, quite strange uh, um, uh, name we have for the project. Uh, it has a history, a uh, story, before uh, the Open CCCP project, 
Uh, some of the partners here have already participated in previous common projects that have been previous steps to arrive to this point. Um, so we had quite uh, some years ago the Be Learning project, uh, where we started testing these methodologies for open training processes and, and this uh, stream that goes uh, near near the learning, sharing, transferring, and uh, and uh, let's say thinking about training in a in a different way. Uh, and this was, at least in our case, uh, probably our first uh, approach to this new, uh, not new way of training, but this new way of working with communities. Uh, also um, sharing and and uh, and using both presential and uh, digital digital tools and then we went to a second project with which is the Euler project and we wanted to lin link this open training processes to the development of skills of those disconnected from the labor market um, here's where we raised the, the, the concept uh, of learning from context, which will be developed in the following, in the following session, uh, which is uh, basically developing skills and competences by being active in the community, which can later be reused in other fields of, of activity. So this concept of learning from con context, context sorry, is it's quite important for us and for the whole, and for the whole project. What do we want to do now? What's, what's, what are we, why are we again working together and trying to move um, on with, with this kind of, of projects? What we want to do is, is generate a model and, and some training material to improve the skills of mediator figures and tr as trainers, cultural managers, so so social educators, youth workers, social workers or others. Um, in urban areas using the commons, art and cultural heritage in their community work to promote social inclusion. Of course, we have a formal objectives in the project, like promoting effect effective OEPs and uh, inspiring um, other, other cultural med um, mediators, but mainly uh, what we want to do is really um, build this model strong to improve the skills of the ones working with the community, inspire others to do so, and um, test this in some uh, specific context. So uh, what, have we, what have we done until now? We have already generated the, let's say, framework, which is called in this case the Comprehensive Model for Open educa Educational Practice and which is the basis, this is mainly what we will, we will be talking about today. Um, from here we developed an open curriculum which is right now uh, in, the, in the website of the project and this is where we are now. So we can tra tra train trainers that would, will then develop local labs We'll talk about it later because somebody, someone's have already developed them. And uh, then each local lab will produce some local action plans, which are really OEPs, that will be put together in a compendium. So we have three, let's say, products of this, of this um, project, which are the open model, the curriculum and the training, and the local labs and the and and its and its compendium. About this training, uh, just to remind you, uh, we were supposed to have five days training, uh, five days, five complete days online. It's absolutely impossible. No one can support. I think uh, a whole day in front of a screen. Um, so we have reorganized the contents to have five sessions of two hours each 
and that must be combined with the contents available in the open curriculum, which is in the website of the project. Afterwards, you'll have this PowerPoint. You can open the links here. We will not um, go through the links right now. I think it's not, not necessary. But basically, um, the five sessions will go around these five topics. The first one, the introduction on why we are talking about open educational resources and we're moving to open educational practices. The second one, learning from context. The third one, aligning actors and visions and uh, the different methodologies that can, that can be used. The fourth one, how to develop local action plans and design them. And the fifth one, uh, about uh, qualification. Um, we have said uh, this first one, but we will we would like to share the options because we want to to for you to participate if it's possible in all of them. So at the end of the of the session, we will uh, share a doodle to set up when is the next uh, the next meeting. The idea is to have. Uh, one or two a week so we can finish this in three weeks more or less um, besides the other practical information important is that um, as this uh, last year couldn't have been more difficult um, had some of the some of you that are participating today have already developed or implemented their local uh, labs. Um, so the good thing about this is that the idea is to share really uh, what we have thought about the let's say theory or the or the model uh, with what you have um, uh, seen or what you have uh, practiced in in your in your labs. So the idea is here really to share what has worked well, what can be uh, improved, or what kind of uh, problems can you find, uh, and and complement, let's say, the ones that are starting with this with this kind of of information, with the experience of the ones that have been developing this for the last uh, months. So um, yeah, please interrupt, uh, ask, share. Um, we can use also the the chat if you want to share any kind of links or or whatever. So please don't do this as uh, don't don't let us speak too much. That that won't be the idea. Um, that's for the practical info. Now, uh, Oscar should go on with the content, the real content. Oscar. Yeah, thank you, Mariana. <clears throat> okay, it's my turn. Sorry. <clears throat> um, sorry for my English is not a uh, uh, very, very, very fine like Mariana, uh, but uh, I, I try. I try to <laughs> to explain all. Okay, um, as Mariana say. Um, we work from OERs, all the open educational resources. This is a, a format uh, that is uh, developed over the past 20, 13 years in open education in some universities. But this, uh, the open educational resources are uh, structured uh, materials uh, texts, images, documents, videos, uh, structured by a uh, similar syllabus or uh, themes, and uh, leave uh, open access to all people to uh, learning by itself. Okay. One of the um, uh, evolutions of the open educational resources are the open educational practices because the open educational practices are actions that uh, complement 
open educational resources. Yeah. For us in this project, we identify the open educational practices as a projects, projects developed the initial uh, from from an initial uh, moment, not as an open educational process, but for us, these projects has lots of items to uh, learning for these uh, processes and these projects. Okay, we are um, in, in transit. Our company have. Uh, a platform is OER making projects.org. It's a platform from OERs we are developing in, in several other European projects. Um, OERs and OEPs develop a, a, a concept we are we have uh, in mind is that blended learning is uh, linking digital tools and practical uh, digital methodologies and practical methodologies okay now uh, mm, the OERs are linked to uh, professionals developments and uh, uh, so hmm is for us it's a transformation of learning to to open uh, access uh, and intellectual property um, because the open educational resources not are a closed contents because all the people can participate to co-create content add content Modify, co modify content or OER we use in this uh, train of trainers is open to to be modified okay as you all are invited to modify the or OER or ER okay we are changing with uh, open educational practices. Uh, the open educational practices include the open sharing of teaching practices, but uh, the rise, the quality of uh, education and, and training, okay? Uh, in, in innovative educational practices and professional. For, uh, for this, uh, for me, in the beginning to think the, the, this project open CCCP, the, the idea is to uh, teach the professionals, the people are linked with the work with communities to increase their level of uh, knowledge, learning from the practices that are uh, develop it in other parts, in other mm, countries, in other projects, etc. Because uh, in social education and cultural management, normally uh, I see lots of people working, creating projects like at, uh, like uh, recreate uh, the will, okay? And this is not uh, good, uh, it's not, it's not it's not it's not a good way because the wheel are invented is 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 ready to use and the wheel we we find the wheel in other projects no it's, it's an, a metaphor <laughs> okay we have uh, some examples uh, examples of uh, of this uh, um in the first part of the open CCP, creating the comprehensive model as a framework, we invite all the partners to collect uh, a lot of uh, open educational practices by uh, some guidelines. And from 
from the past, um, I, I started working with the uh, um, official social educators, professional college of uh, Catalonia, developing a, developing a project called uh, Ciutat Beta, it's a beta city, okay? Ciutat Beta is a project that put in common a, a territory, a, a neighborhood, a place with uh, neighbors, with some professionals that choose to participate from an open call to think and to work in a problem with this community. Um, Ciudad so, so Beta works from five uh, years. Sorry. <laughs> uh, and no, Alex, it's not a maximum of participants. We have 15 participants. Okay. But only 12 can have the the screen open, or the, the camera open. Okay, I return. So the better put in common uh, professionals from an open call and a neighborhood or a community with a problem. We chose, uh, we chose uh, some parts in Barcelona, some neighborhoods in Barcelona, um, very with with special needs, uh, and Mariana put the, the the link in the chat. And after this, uh, the, the project is uh, based on three layers: um, context, working uh, in. Uh, prototypes, working on prototypes all together, networks and, and professionals. And after, uh, develop these uh, prototypes in life. Okay, these prototypes are open educational practices for us. Um, in the beginnings are a project that work a lot of well, a final we work in in the city center of Barcelona with uh, annoying the administration a little bit with the project because it's a, a non-official project in, in impacting in the community in the city center but for us this is a success another example is uh Objective of Venus, or Venus objective, is one of the uh, good pra good practices or examples we make in the, in the Open CCCP project. Uh, is based in a neighborhood initiative that works on, on the city of uh, Barcelona in the in the neighborhood of the La Mina. It's a very very special. <laughs> uh, neighborhood with lots of years of uh, no administrations helping uh, but uh, so, yeah incredible uh, live alone <laughs> but the neighbors finally organize uh, um, self-organization to fight against uh, the the nonsense of the administration. Uh, Venus is a building, it's a big building. We are a lot of people living there and the administration decide to uh, fall down without another, no, no plans for the future of the people that, that is living in here. And the people is self-organizing a project, self-organizing social networks, and self-organizing a crowdfunding campaign to pay uh, 
uh, lawyers and help uh, to find help to solve this problem. Okay, there are in in the struggle now. The other project uh, we choose is Fem Kiosk. Uh, kiosk is, is an uh, I, I don't know. It's like uh, press uh, press. Uh, uh, Mariana, help, please. <laughs> I don't know if all understand kiosk. Understand kiosk. I think it's the translation is is yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> newspaper stall. Okay, newspaper stall in a play a, in a square, uh, in in an in a neighborhood near of Barcelona, San Boy de Llobregat. That is uh, abandoned. It's not not. Um, Selling newspapers is closed, and the municipality opened a call for projects to develop inside. A group of uh, young uh, social educators, women, they uh, uh, finished the, the university some months ago. Some months ago, they present a project. They win. And and she developed a project is to uh, to put the kiosk in the center of the neighborhood, uh, creating activities, community activities, uh, uh, activities for children, for women, for elderly people. It's a very very good initiative because it's a good relation between administration and. A project from the ground. Next, Mariana, please. Next slide. Just, just a second. Just a second. <laughs> Technical problems. Yeah. This is not working. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, in our framework, uh, one of the. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. What is the main ideas we we find to to learn from the OEPs, or we find in the OEPs to learn? Okay. Uh, we find eight attributes uh, we need for an OEP have participatory technologies. We cannot uh, uh, forget the technology as a help us for in this moment. More in pandemic uh, uh, situation because we need to to stay connected by uh, uh, teleconferences and so on or teleworking. Yeah. But uh, for us, participatory technologies are good. Are good to to work with communities because we have a lot of type typologies of uh, people in the neighborhoods or in the communities. No? Another attribute is openness. We believe in open. <laughs> I believe in open because open. For, for me, is I, I work in open, okay? It's my my objective in life is working open because the open is more uh, um, it's more warm for the people. The people like more the people the the. the the situations are all clear and the openness or motivate all the process clear. Another attribute is innovation and creativity because lots of projects working with communities 
has traditional methodologies to participate. Oh, we are to vote or we are to decide. Okay. All these decision processes can be uh, with, we can, um, can be uh, increased by innovation and creativity. For this, we work from the commons. Uh, the commons are, are have a large history in our humanity. Uh, we work with the commons to manage uh, fields, to manage uh, uh, resources, or and other things. Now, we from the 16th, we are working from commons here in, in, in Barcelona in Spain we we, we talk about pro commun no pro commons no but the commons are all the things we are in common and we manage in common the, yes uh, this uh, commons can be uh, digital can be physical can be uh, a landscape can be a lot of things, okay? Another attribute is the sharing of ideas and resources. Openness is linked with sharing. Sharing uh, all the projects can have a uh, lot of methodologies or processes for sharing ideas and resources between the people as involved in the project. The other attribute is connected communities. When we work with a community, normally we work as a special community and we take this community like a, a ecosystem alone, but never is an ecosystem alone it's linked with other ecosystems with other communities with other and we need to take care with these connections for our intervention another attribute of the on oep is generation of apprentice normally with with when we work in, in an intervention or in a project with a community, we are solving problems, we are attending the, the, the emergencies or the, the real problems, and we don't stop to think about what we can learn about this. Uh, what can we write or explain about the project to all the people learn about our project or experience. Another attribute of the OEP is uh, reflexive practices and peer reviewing. We need to openness and sharing is linked with the peer reviewing because Another peer, uh, other peers like us can help us to uh, um, up our uh, eyes about our project or intervention and, and evaluate and say something about if we are wrong or we are making a good project or we are in the good way, in the right way. We need to think and evaluate our, pro our processes in constant, uh, in constant, in, in, in the process, say, in the same process. Okay. And the last uh, attribute is in including some aspects of cultural heritage. Because we are human, <laughs> and the humans have a in common a culture. And the cultural heritage is, uh, is something we are uh, in common and something we have uh, 
mm, we managed to gather the the one of the examples we we we, we tried to 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 show the is the the, the meal or the cooking the cooking meal is is a process of uh, cultural heritage you know transferring uh, cooking and methodologies of cooking recipes are, are an incredible uh, process, uh, an incredible example to 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 explain that you no know? okay what is, is what is the, uh, our, our, our objective in this project is is, is to promote a, a, a model of, of, of open educational practices highly effective more than the exist uh, inspire cultural mediators in all of uh, professional type typologies to set community processes to a common framework based on open educational practices and uh, in our document uh, are all well explained because we are working to, and a lot of things we will talk uh, later developing a specific practical plans to initiate community processes based on tangible or intangible natural or digital cultural heritage because Every com every community has a specific uh, commons and uh, ecosystems that rule the community. Open CCP try to identify and share innovative learning approach by other actors. That is the example of of OEP we we collect from from or five countries. Uh, one of the things we, we learn in Euler project is how the results of our project increase the level of employability of the participants in, in the, this learning uh, process because we offer new competences and skills training people with new methodologies and uh, processes to work with communities and open ccp framework can mm, promote new and open open models of participatory learning for for open training processes this is the the final final uh, objective of the project okay the model uh, is uh, is a long document i invite you to 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 read to analyze and to criticize or <laughs> to make some okay for develop we are in the train of trainers we try to train you to train people <laughs> okay about this methodology this is a very very circular way okay for the comprehensive model we work in two lines finding an open methodology a finding an open-minded design um okay the open methodology uh in the in the in the history of education, we have lots of uh, methodologies uh, about uh, uh, learning, no? But in lifelong learning, we don't have a uh, lot of experiences uh, of normally as 
you go to the academy and make a recycled course about your uh, learning, previ uh, previous learning about your work, no? With open methodology, we increase the learning and literacy of the people, no? With new methodologies, new practices. Because we, we this type of, uh, of processes is, have an impact in short term, increasing the focus on receiving information from the environment and using methodologies that mix different learning pathways. From the environment, because all the course is an environment, all the participants can share their experience, no? At mid-term impact, increasing the focus on open educational practices and initiating a, a, a deep reflection of the connection between OEPs and methodologies, because an OEP can uh, contain a methodology, a clear methodology or not. We can define a methodology from one OEP. A long-term impact, increasing the focus on the culture of social innovation and the scene of actions appears to build an OEP. This is part of the open, uh, open methodology. I, I, I am sure this is a little bit uh, uh, theoretical, but uh, we, after we, we try to put uh, on the ground and and the, and the next sessions, okay. The second uh, step is open learning design because we believe all the local labs or all of you when you return of your context and develop the the local labs the local labs can be uh, adapted to every context and the every context are different With open learning design, uh, we develop a good practices that scaffolds learning processes uh, and helps to capture and represent practice structure, user participation and case studies. Which this is part of our uh, objective in the project. No, the Per the OAPs we selected in the research in in the five countries as case studies for our course, and we can show this on the on the local labs. Um, create the learning a uh, 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 design. Uh, learning processes is not easy because we need to take care of a lot of things uh, to try to to create no to create an environment of learning with all the things we can uh, on our other hands like uh, digital tools methodologies objectives etc etc Uh, sorry, one moment. We have we, we we need to take care to to design an open learning about the engagement, again engagement of the of the students. Okay. Uh, in the framework, we have more explained it that. And I, I, I can only make the, the the few words about that. Engagement, representation. Engagement is centered and optimized common choice and autonomy 
uh, uh, making clear goals and objectives, uh, finding resources, optimize challenges, foster collaboration, uh, promote expectations, facilitate personal uh, skills and strategies. That is can be part of or take care with it when we design the local lab. Okay. Representation is more uh, how we customize and display the information, how we make visual information about how we use uh, the words, the vocabulary, the symbols, the syntax, the structure, how we make this clear for the people. Because in some projects we use a lot of words, confusing, no? The innovation can be confused, no? Uh, help to the code symbologies, uh, methodologies to understand better. Use multiple media and help us to learn in, in, in digital environments. Another thing to take care is action and expression. Optimize access to tools. Uh, multimedia for communication. Not all the people has the same skills like us, for example, to use uh, social networks or computers or, or other tools we, we need to make more or learning more easy, no? Uh, support and guide, planning the, the course on the knowledge, uh, the production of the knowledge. For, and, and this is as the open learning uh, design. Mariana, please, can you change the, oh, yeah, evaluation. When I talk about uh, evaluation, um, we think a lot about this because normally the evaluation in education and culture is about quantity. It's a number of people participate, number of people as coming or uh, participatory process, number of associations can contact it and deliver it or project, la 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 la, okay? But if we are in an open process, in an open project with sharing, we need to take care of uh, different visions of the evaluation. One of this is from our side, from the facilitators and mediator side. Hmm. Because we design in the first moment or learning processes. But at the final of the process, we need to evaluate this from our eyes if we are happy with the results, or if we are happy with the increase of the knowledge produced inside this, this environment. We need to know we can change at the final to continuous teaching other people 
¿no? Ok. Um, concrete. Uh, in, in focus on the project, we need to evaluate from the local lab side. That is from our course, how we evaluate the course, how we evaluate uh, the results of the lo local lab. Mm -hmm. Another side for the evaluate is the open educational practice design side, because the results of the local labs are open educational practices. We can put on reality or, or develop in reality or not, but we need to have these results from the local labs. If the design of the local lab uh don't help to develop this we have a lack in in this design we need to to evaluate this and the other is the uh, and the other side we need to evaluate is from the students we need the opinion and the evaluation of the students in an open processes, we need to leave the students interact and, in, and participate in every moment. But uh, at the end of the process, we need a uh, evaluation from the student. Ouch. This is my audio it's okay it's okay vale. okay and this is the the we create some forms to to evaluate all these uh, four components in in the local labs okay but we need uh, we, we we make this open to your participation your apples uh, your comments and and then mariana if i think change the slide please oh okay this is the end oh my god Okay. Yeah, I think I think uh, uh, yeah, it sounds a bit horrible reading the you know reading this uh, coming from nowhere and without and without any uh, concrete um, example. Um, so um, one thing is, of course, we invite you to read. Uh, um, the 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 model calmly and and try to find out if 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 you have any doubts or if you have any uh, disagreements, which might be. Uh, but then uh, I will uh, let me go back to some slides um, here. Um, maybe a a, a good uh, a good way to understand this is try to go through this with the examples or with one of the examples Oscar uh, mentioned and also try to share what you have uh, already um, experienced in the labs you have already um, uh, developed. So for example, um, when, we, when we talk about these eight attributes of the OEP, we are thinking that whatever we plan doing in the local labs should have at least part of these attributes. So uh, when we finish this, uh, this training, we are supposed to be able to develop um, uh, a, local, a local lab. And in this local lab, we have to consider 
which participatory technologies we will use, how will we address this openness, are we using, are we being innovative or not, how are we addressing creativity, etc. Um, the same goes for these, uh, for the second, sorry, I have to go back to the PowerPoint, uh, to the key aspects of, the, of, the, of this local lab, how to define this open methodology and this open uh, learning design. So, Oscar, what I suggest is to uh, use the example of, of Ciudad Beta to, uh, to, to show if these attributes were present or not, and if there were not, uh, was it a problem? Uh, how are we thinking we could solve it, for example? And then I would like to invite um, the Italian partners to, for example, uh, explain this, these attributes in their uh, local lab because they have already finished the, their experience. So um, to, to know if these attributes were present and if they find there are any other things we should consider as really uh, basic for these, for for this design of, of an OEP. So, uh, Oscar, if, we, if it's okay for you, um, we can go through all eight attributes and, and say how did it work in Ciudad Beta. Maybe, yeah. uh, I don't know, uh, we, we had a brief explanation of what was it, um, but uh, if I remember well, we, we, we had quite a, a few experiences on, on that project. It ran for five years, if I'm not wrong. Um, so maybe we can use one of the experiences of one year to say we addressed this in that way, and or we improved it the next, the next year, etc. Yes, uh, if I can share the screen, I can put the website in. Okay, moment, please. La 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 la. One moment. Okay. Yeah. Um. Sorry. Okay. Oops. Okay. Uh, so the beta, um, finally, the, the European Union identifies the beta as a public uh, policy lab because we produce a uh, lot of innovation processes and with uh, in, in the process we develop um i try to show okay For example, the 13 experiences to know the neighbor. Is uh, this is this project is one of the uh, open educational practices we develop in the first time of Cita Beta. In every moment, we develop three or five prototypes. And all these prototypes are open in the website to replicate, to copy, and to download, and, and to uh, adapt to or different local uh, context. But uh, this, uh, this project is working in the city center of Barcelona in a neighborhood with uh, uh, different levels of neighbors of neighbors um, 
the historical neighbors, people with uh, elderly people, we live uh, all the life in, in the in in the neighbor uh, in the neighborhood, and the new neighbors are young people, people from Europe that work and live in Barcelona. We work with the neighbors and the professionals to identify how to make more knowledge about the neighborhood to the new people come to life in the neighborhood. And we design 13 experiences for know a life in, in the neighborhood. Uh, this process is involved uh, mm, a participatory technology. We make an open call. We, in the first, we contact with uh, the neighbors in the in 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 the neighborhood associations, people, individual people, la, 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 la. We make some meetings and talking about we can thinking to do with Ciudad Beta. We explain what is the project. And after we open a call to professionals to work with the, with the associations and with the individual people, neighbors, we sell it. And we use participatory technologies. We make a workshop. We make a workshop. I have pictures, more or less. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. Ooh. No, I don't find. Sorry, we in the website of people of the workshop, we put all the people in common, all the professionals that uh, selected for from the open call and the neighbors. This process is open. It's open. It's, it's not limited. And we use a professional and I, we invite uh, an expert, an expert to manage uh, the participatory process, to make the mediation between professionals and neighbors, to make more understand uh, uh, the language from the professionals and from the neighbors. No, this workshop is uh, have several paths brainstorming and we use we use a participatory platform is co-creable at, at this moment this this platform don't work but we use this 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 platform because all the people have the workshop in face-to-face -face and the platform in digital to work sorry to work with uh, um, the prototypes to develop ideas to share to share ideas etc is a platform think it to help to co-create Um, the idea of the project is connect communities, connect two different types of neighbors in the neighborhood. We try this, but I don't think it's a success at the end of the project. All the experience is open in in the website i think we generate an apprentice 
because from this project we extract uh, we 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 develop the project we learning and after earlier and after this no i think this a lot of people in the in the professional association of social educators have this project as a, mm, a good experience a good practice and the european union identified the project as a public policy lab for us is a, a good evaluation no? and in the end if, if we have for know the the reality of the neighborhood we use the cultural heritage about uh, for example what is the um, uh, bar to eat the best uh, spanish uh, omelet uh, in the in in the neighborhood okay this we have a passport and we can go to this and the bar is uh, clicking our passport stamping stamping sorry stamping your passport um we know cultural heritage uh, industrial cultural heritage that at this moment is closed in the neighborhood as an uh manufacture of uh, fabrics closet but for these days are open it for us to visit and it's the time is stop it and in the 13s <laughs> and the 30 experiences is the same because we change uh, I, I think we have the the map with the 13 experiences yeah this is we work with this for us this is the example of the use of the eight attributes of the oep in in Sierra beta mariana great um We've been talking about a quite uh, challenging situation. We have had it for the, for, for the last year, of course. This project has been, uh, let's say, um, transversely affected by the pandemic. <laughs> and I think this kind of, uh, this kind of, of, of training and this kind of community um, activities and learning communities community learning activities uh, are being of course terribly affected by the lockdowns the restrictions and uh, etc so um, as far as the as the labs of the project has, have been developed in Italy they did it completely face to face in Germany they started face to face and they had to move on to another um, scenarios and another methodologies. And I think um, we have to consider that this is something that is happening and we don't know when it will stop happening. Um, so we maybe have to reflect on these attributes uh, in this new scenario also. Can we continue developing this kind of things um, if we cannot meet or <laughs> uh, can we use I don't know uh, partic participatory methodologies but online uh, how has been the experience from 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 Berlin for example in this in this way from presential to to digital so uh, I don't know, maybe we can start with Paola's... Ah, Lorenzo, uh, please. Yeah, I have a, a very quick intervention because uh, I, I will need to leave you in five minutes, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so I want to just to say that yesterday we had our final laboratory 
Vibke was there, unfortunately Francisca couldn't join, but basically she could definitely give you some feedback also on, we had also some kind of final wrap up and obviously the topic of how moving from uh, presence to working online affected the result of the, of the lab. So I'm... Okay, Vika has the has a word the, afterwards. The Berlin team can can have a word also on our experience. And okay. I say hello, everybody. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I think it's 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 interesting right now to know uh, what worked and what didn't work in in this in this way from presential to non presential. Um, but then, of course, I would like to start with the original idea, which is a completely presential lab. <laughs> What uh, what was hopefully done in Italy in time before other lockdowns and other ideas of restrictions in, in Italy. So pa I don't know, Paula or Giorgio, who's present, who's explaining? You can uh, share. Um, okay. We start. <laughs> okay. So in our um, we will go then uh, when we will have our module. Uh, uh, Again, we will uh, go deep in details about uh, our labs. Um, so we, we call it Cup Open Lab, so a bit referring uh, to the name of the project, but uh, with a really local, uh, uh, I would say, deep local dimension. And Claudia uh, uh, was uh, that joined the, the training with you, is, uh, was also one of the trainee, trainer of the, of the workshop. Um, so according, uh, so it was, uh, I think we had just uh, one or two um, meetings that were online. So one was a kind of mix. There were some participants in our space and uh, some other joining uh, um, online, but most of the training have been, uh, of, the, of, the, of the labs have been realized uh, um, in, in, uh, in the neighborhood uh, Capo where we, where we work. Um, so the, um, it was, I think, necessary to have it presential for the, for the um, kind of activities that we proposed to the participants. So the first part of the lab that uh, was led by Claudia was about uh, cultural stratification in, uh, in the, of the neighborhood uh, Capo. And uh, so the, the participants had uh, exploration and uh, mapping, uh, uh, expression mapping experience uh, in, in the neighborhood. Um, so it was uh, going to the, going to the um, um, attributes. Uh, so I think uh, um, for sure we had, uh, we connected the communities in the sense that the participants were doing this exploration, but with the participation of the residents of the neighborhood. So the, um, they kind of combine uh, um, the information um, about the local cultural heritage with interview and meetings with, uh, with the local uh, residents. So they, were, they have been able in a really short time to um, get in contact with locals and uh, um, yeah, to be, uh, so also in this sense, the locals were like uh, uh, kind of giving information to the, to the participants of the lab. Uh, in some cases, they were also going in working places like uh, workshops of the of some worker of the neighborhood. So it was really uh, interesting for the participants, or they were listening stories coming from uh, um, yeah the past and uh, stories that they that they memories that they knew from from before. Um, I would say also. Um, there has been a part, of course, it was about the um, local cultural heritage. The main two topics that were selected by the participants have been the toponomastic, so the name, um, so the, the name of the streets and the, the relation from the name of the streets and uh, um, stories, uh, works, uh, activities that have been realized in the neighborhood so far or for example the presence of uh, river in the neighborhood 
and uh, some other aspects. So they were analyzed by the participants uh, um, with a look on the past and uh, also a perspective of, on uh, how this, uh, this name of the streets have been changed during uh, uh, also uh, now. So th there were some also kind of funny example of uh, how the inhabitants, the residents of the neighborhood changed the name of the square of the street because uh, for example there is a man that is cleaning a, a square and uh, he wrote uh, in a paper that uh, now the name of the square is its name Antonino <laughs> so and, uh, uh, he was part of the lab as well because uh, he, he think that the, the square is uh, his own square because he's cleaning every day the square so also in, in this sense, we use the toponomastic also as a way to interact with the, with the residents uh, and uh, with the use of the places now. Um, the other main topic has been the different cult, um, cults, so the different religious cults that are in the neighborhood. There are two mosques um, and also other different kind of uh, uh, religious cult so they also the participants in this case were exploring uh, uh, these resources and um, so also combining them as well with the uh, uh, living experience of the of the residents and um, so in this sense uh, it was uh, it include uh, I would say more than some aspects of the cultural heritage and this was uh, the idea and uh, we they use in the first part uh, of Claudia the labs were uh, realized at the end uh, the participants realized some um, two uh, Google My Map uh, um, maps, so in, in which they were combining uh, the picture of the resources uh, map and uh, other resources, also including uh, uh, bibliographic. Uh, uh, research on the on the elements that they identify. Um, also, um, the second part of the lab, uh, led by Giancarlo, that you will uh, meet also in the next uh, meetings, uh, has been more focused on. Uh, you will see the local action plan, uh, but uh, it also involved the students from the Faculty of Architecture of Palermo. So we have two different groups. In the group of Claudia, I would say was. Uh, also with architecture, students of architecture, but it was a, um, a mixed group also with uh, um, different uh, participants with different uh, also profile. Uh, and in the second one, uh, uh, so the previous participants were um, also joined by this uh, other group of students. So one idea to, um, that, that Claudia and, jo and Giancarlo has to connect the two groups of participants was to realize two tour of the neighborhood based on the elements identified by during the previous labs. So actually there was also this, uh, I would say, this uh, dimension of uh, reflexive practices and peer reviewing because the participants could uh, uh, yeah, let uh, the others know what they have identified and in this sense uh, have a tour uh, in, uh, in the neighborhood. This was um, the beginning of the second phase of the lab. Um, yeah, I think these are the main attributes. I don't know if... Uh, George and Claudia want to add something more. Claudia, maybe if you want to. Um, no, maybe just uh, maybe the part with uh, Giancarlo and the project uh, that they developed because they used the canvas. So uh, due to the fact that the, the participants were different in the second part, they developed more the part about projects on the, on the neighborhood. So the first part was about collecting more the memories, collecting the old information about the cultural uh, heritage sites. And the second part was to try to develop some projects about them, starting from them. Um, and I think we are quite lucky because there was a good answer by the local uh, local people, because now it's been uh, kind of maybe two or three years that I work with uh, Paola and Giorgio. I think that now finally the neighborhood is opening but it gets really a lot, you know, to, to open and to start and find and having really a connection with them. I think that this group 
uh, worked well, of course, because maybe um, they find they found the right way also to to start a dialogue with the with the people from the neighborhood, but also because after some years people are starting to to know bond of union and so they they get what we do they understand they are a bit more open they really open sometimes their uh, work labs as uh, for example paula was saying and uh, so i think it was some, this time we are more able to get into their their life and to involve more them in the in the in the activities but unfortunately we didn't do the the final um, uh, open day because we're lucky as uh, Mariana said at the beginning because we really fit into into this uh, small uh, time to this uh, few months where we could have the the the, the lab uh, like uh, in uh, in person and not uh, online but then everything uh, got closed again so now we're waiting for, to have like this final open meeting and I think this could be it it would be nice it would have been nice to have it just at the end of the project of course of the laboratory but i don't know about uh, what what are you planning now maybe i think in the, in the summer no, but now no. it's impossible no we plan um, so our plan is to start again in spring because we are very optimistic <laughs> that in spring mm. we would be able okay. to continue the, the process um also we would like as claudia said but giancarlo will and Claudio explained better in the session about local action plan and so they developed a free action plan and uh, so also we can think about uh, realizing uh, some of the ideas uh, proposed by the participants uh, and to combine them with the multiplier event uh, but let's see how it will be uh, I think we were uh, lucky in, uh, okay, of course, uh, yeah, we we are now more uh, like, uh, let's say, known in the neighborhood and uh, so we had really good feedback from the local participants. But I think we were also lucky for two aspects. The first, uh, the weather, because uh, it was November and December, but uh, it was like uh, very hot and uh, nice to, to stay outside, I would say we also had some activity totally outside and the second one is that uh, uh, as uh, all the people were coming from a bit not doing that much in that period before so they were so happy to be part of this uh, lab so they and they i would say gave to us uh, and uh, participate 100 uh, percent uh, to the activity so they didn't just do what they supposed to do but they were really uh, happy to to realize uh, the, this workshop uh, with us so let's see how we will uh, go on <laughs> I would just add uh, regarding the idea to mix different uh, open educational resources um, to obtain a, learn, a learning uh, method, a learning process. I think we, we did in a lot of way by mixing different uh, also methodology like like we we try to explain also using and adapting the canvas model, for example, for the local action plan. Um, so I think in some way we did also 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 this. Yeah, and so also the part of Claudia, uh, Claudia combined really well-known formal uh, educational methods. So it was uh, really um, good for the participants because they had the introduction of some theor theoretical uh, aspects that then have been uh, uh, explain and uh, um, experience it through exercises and uh, uh, activity, also outdoor activities. So this for us is uh, the best way to um, sorry <laughs> to combine uh, um, yeah theory and uh, activity, practical activities. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. It, we will explain better in our section. So yes, of course, of course. The, <laughs> this was just trying to, you know, make more practical what we have spoken before. Because if not, it stays like in a very theoretical level that it's difficult to really understand. Um, so I, I would like Vivke, if it's uh, possible, 
to explain what you experienced in 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 this strange <laughs> in this strange lab you had to to develop uh, yeah of course so um but in the beginning of the workshop we did an urban exploration and we um looked at the neighborhood from different perspectives and this part we luckily could do on site still so um that was quite good so we had uh yeah we could really walk through the city and we can have it we, we had a discussion together about the different uh, perspectives that we explored and discovered and yeah there was really lucky that we could still do that on site and then for the second module we um we tried to link our observations to heritage and the initial idea was actually to do this on a map and to pin some um some points that we've observed and link link them with uh, threads on a map together and um yeah since we then spontaneously had to reschedule that and do that online uh, it got a bit more complicated um there was not really um there was not a really good method to do online since yeah it was actually thought that we could have like a physical thread that we could wrap around the um the observations um we tried to use the mirror board and i think there was also a, a good alternative um but since it was so spontaneous um uh, it was it was still quite complicated to put the the initial method we wanted to use together with the online method so yeah there that, that was that was quite complicated and also from the feedback we got yesterday from the participants they said that they got a lot out of the um of the um workshops on site and it helped them very much to be physically present and in the in the online version in the online mapping it got a bit confusing because yeah we couldn't collaborate together as we wanted to and yeah in the end we developed stories out of our observations and out of the um yeah things we discovered in the in the explorations and uh i, I can just say from my perspective i think that again worked quite well like online discussions were possible when you don't have to like do something physically together but just discuss things it was okay but we had to um, split our sessions because i mean as you all know it's really exhausting to be online all the time and stare at the screen so we had to split some sessions and i also think that was a quite good idea um yeah maybe francisca can add something if you want Uh, I think it's super nice explained already, but maybe just um, do not know if you uh, know what the modules were about. The first one was about uh, urban reconnaissance, uh, the second about mapping and the third about storytelling. So the first was more really about yeah, getting to know the neighborhood. And so every participant got a secret mission and these missions were dedicated to different topics of a city. So it was a gendered city or it was uh, about timelines or defining a timeline for the area we are exploring. So this was a quite um, interesting way to explore the neighborhood. And this was always done by two participants so they could see uh, or get like different perspectives of the area. And then, like Rika said, developing uh, own projects more through the mapping and then through the storytelling model. Yeah, I think that's it from my side. Yeah, I think it's nice to, to if we link this with the attributes we were talking about, um and with the and with the part where oscar explained that we have to really keep in mind lots of things when we uh, plan a lab it's not just uh, bringing people together and go through, through the neighbor having a walk um as you said you had a plan with the uh, three modules and switching into digital uh make it difficult to link the first with the second with this new way of doing in the second so um it's 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 for me it's just a good example uh that um that we really have to keep in mind um 
all the details. I mean, the methodologies have to be linked with the publics or the beneficiaries or the or the participants we're working with. Uh, these uh, methodologies have to be linked with uh, the idea of, of of the context where we're where we're working. Um, and we, of course, uh, we can innovate. For example, the the idea of the missions uh, for, to explore the to explore the neighborhood, I find it super creative, and it's uh, you you can go through a neighborhood in quite different ways. And I think having a mission, uh, a thematic mission, is super innovative and and creative. So we can we can go through this eight attributes and we can see that what we have what you have developed in this case um, maybe even not having these attributes in mind because you probably didn't read these before um, these things match and make sense with this kind of, uh, this kind of of, uh, of community activities and that's what we have to in some sense validate altogether i mean we have more or less experience uh, in this kind of uh, community activities um, and these attributes as far as we have gone in these examples uh, make sense or, or, or match with this uh, with this what we call OEPs um, so uh, yeah maybe we can we can give a thought for the next for the next uh, session if we think there's something missing in the in these attributes or 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 uh, or something more or less important maybe this is not a homework huh? but but maybe we can think if if uh, and discuss afterwards if it's more important to have participatory technologies and to think really which ones are we working with than to uh, be innovative for example or they really are on the same level, Oscar. It seems uh, like a fire at home. <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> um, or are they at the same level, and we have to consider them in in a global sense, and and uh, and just try to keep in mind that they have to be coherent, and they have to make this whole experience like I don't know, like. 360 degrees uh, vision, you know. So um, yeah, uh, Oscar the Dragon. <laughs> I don't know if if, if uh, Alex, do you want to to share something about your experience? Do you have any uh, doubts of, about what we have been talking about? No, um, our uh, we actually finished the local labs yesterday, and I have Livia here. She's a one of the participants to the local labs. Uh, I think everything that was discussed fits, fits very well with our approach to the local labs. Um, we emphasize the participatory parts. Um, we uh, selected specific communities that we designed the action plans for. Uh, we started with the with the uh as uh, first stage of learning as much relevant information about the target communities and as much as cust as, as personalized information uh, statistical data resources uh, institutional resources but also uh, people and businesses and so uh, everything is is fits very well with the, with the, what's been discussed so far and you were you did it completely online am i yep. right Okay, yes. and did you find any limitations on, on this way of doing it, or...? Yes, because uh, it's, it's very difficult to have a discussion online, even though, you know, people may follow rules and be very, um, uh, you know, orderly. <laughs> when you have people in the same room, they can just, you know, add a word or a sentence, and it, it, it takes less time than to wait for everybody to express an opinion and people don't overlap so you don't understand and then you don't have connection issues so uh, yes it's it's very difficult but at the same time i think we 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 managed uh, given the conditions to to achieve what we wanted and then uh, for this last session we actually discussed the local um, uh, action plans which allowed for everybody to speak everybody to sp you know, present what they, they worked on. So it was a 
but they both had to work at home for part of the uh, you know we had we, we designed our local action well uh, actually we designed our local labs to have about 30 hours presential and then 10 hours uh, uh, of uh, home research and work at home for for the participants so they, they, there is a lot of of exchange of ideas and a lot of um, of um, back and forth between us uh, as, as, as as trainers and the participants uh because of the of the fact that we kind of started it, it wasn't a surprise we started this local lab with the thought that we won't be able to meet so we we, we uh, managed to to work through the uh constraints of the pandemic um so it, it wasn't terrible uh what we would have liked to be able to do was would it would have been nice if we had had that opportunity to take the participants and have some hands-on experience with the target groups that the local labs, uh, the local action plans actually focused on. Uh, so we, it's it's a lot theoretical, but we hope to be able to add because now they finished the local action plans and the, by Monday we will be providing some feedback to make it even more uh, uh, applicable. You know these plans to be more applicable more. In, in connection with 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 the reality, but there is a layer of separation between uh, um, you know a plan and what this would have looked like had the participants seen the beneficiaries, had they, had they seen the communities, had they been there. So there is a there is a I say we we had managed to overcome some obstacles except for this. Uh, this connection to the reality part. Okay. Okay. Any any other comments on this on this introductory part? We're almost at six. We would like to keep on these two hours and not more because we're all exhausted with screens. So <laughs> we'll try to do it two hours and two hours. Um, but we still have 15 minutes. We have to uh, just share the doodle for the next, to set the next meetings, but that would be maybe five minutes. Um, just a last turn if somebody else wants to share something or um, whatever. Also, before giving the floor to anybody else, uh, I would like to, to invite uh like really invite you to go through the through the material we have online and uh it would be nice also if you can have a read you know read the the the, the second module before uh the next meeting so we can get the most of the presential part and not do not um you know waste uh time maybe explaining things that you can read and understand easily um that would be uh, perfect. If not, of course, you can go through it whenever you want and whenever you can. So, anybody else wanting to say something? Jim, big, uh, big yeah, hand in your face. That works, doesn't it? <laughs> wow, they're a bit too big. <laughs> Um, I, I just wanted to um, grab the mic because I'm supposed to talk next uh, time. And um, first of all, uh, following transit is a hard, a hard act to follow, of course. I, I don't know if you saw Oscar, but everybody was mesmerized with your explanation. So I, I, would, I wanted to give some context uh, of what I wanted to do next week uh, or next time we don't have a date yet. I think what's important to keep in mind is that the model we are presenting here is is only a hypothesis. We're still testing and we're improving. So the the um, attributes uh, we're putting forward are um, at this point they're descriptive. They're not supposed to be uh, points you have to or uh, boxes you have to tick when you do this type of work. Um, so what I want to focus on next week. Is maybe in this in one end on one end the bigger picture is where does this come from where um, because it tells also the story of where 
uh, City Mind met Transit and met uh, Lorenzo and Tessere. And that is from, uh, for me, Transit was very much about uh, teaching uh, and making teaching politically different, uh, sharing knowledge in a different way. Whereas uh, at the time we met, we were very much engaged in learning how to acquire knowledge that could emancipate you. Those are very different continents we came from. And I think where we met first time be learning, first time properly be learning, then more in, in Euler and then what we're doing now, is to find a way where learn can take place, where it's captured, where it's made useful, and where it's made um, uh, fair in the sense that nobody's excluded, nobody's uh, talked down to, um, but that requires some systems to be put in place and that's for me what the meta methodology is trying to do or at least the hypothesis of a methodology. So that's one thing I'd like to talk about next week. The second thing is much more practical hopefully is that how is it taking place, what did we take away from the end uh, conference in Berlin uh, about learning from context. Um, but this sounds like an ad all of a sudden, doesn't it? So tune in next time. <laughs> no, perfect. It's it's great to have uh, to have the, uh, the the already the idea of what we're we're going to to work on next time. So if it's okay for you and um, and uh, yeah, nobody wants to raise a big hand uh, again. <laughs> um, I'll share the I'll share in the chat the link for the doodle. Thank you, Oscar. <laughs> so the uh, the idea is to set now the the next four sessions because if not, it would it's really difficult for everybody to 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 organize themselves. So um, yeah, please have have a look at it, uh, answer it in this next five minutes uh, check your agendas and we'll try to find out the best dates for everybody and we'll send an email to all the participants setting the next uh, the next meetings the idea is to have them always uh in the afternoon because of uh working um yeah trying to 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 make it easy to to uh, conciliate with work <laughs> sorry my english today is a bit stuck but i'll improve <laughs> Giorgio, yeah, sorry. Sorry. Um, uh, for giancarlo is not here we need to send him i don't know if he can uh, answer him i don't think so uh no but uh just send, uh, forward him the 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 link later. Okay. Uh, and and uh yeah ask him okay. to answer during the weekend and on monday we can we can okay. send the final dates okay also to paola that has left and to lorenzo so yeah that's about it for for today uh thank you very much for your patience because today was a bit i think it was a bit uh, hard to go through this hypothesis we have uh, and this methodology we've been working on um, but we really want to go on more and more uh, practical so uh, as Jim said uh, we're 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 going we're going to to talk about um, but a bit of the history and the learning from context next week and then uh, we'll have uh, the, the session with Lorenzo uh, more uh, with more applied methodologies and explaining um, how to link uh, things afterwards we will go uh, through even more applied things like uh, developing local action plans and we will finish with the with the short introduction to uh, qualifications on this kind of, of training, which is something uh, we have not really um, solved. Let's say we do not have the <laughs> we do not have the the the, uh, the best way to to solve this. But 
I think it's important because, uh, as we mentioned in different uh, moments, uh, we are um, we are working with skills. Uh, we are we are uh, raising knowledge that that is uh, already uh, in the communities, and uh, and there is a challenge on how to um, certify these competences and these skills. So I think. Uh, there's a long path to to go, but but this short introduction on on what we should go through to get uh, a formal, let's say, qualification of this kind of training, it's it's also interesting to finish the the whole training. Um, so yeah, that's about it from my side. Thank you very much again. Have a very nice weekend and you'll get a mail from me on Monday around midday with the results of the of the doodle. So um, hopefully we'll see each other next week at some point. Okay. So it's time yes. like goodbye. <laughs> Thank Bye. you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.